Hello, my name is Jayesh Jadhav and in today's video, we are diving into Power Automate Cloud Interview Questions. Whether you are preparing for an interview or just want to enhance your knowledge, this video is packed with all the important questions you need to know. I'll cover a range of topics, from basic concepts to advanced scenarios, to help you ease your next interview. So, make sure to watch till the end and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tech content. Let's get started. Explain the concept of concurrency control in Power Automate and how it affects workflow execution. Concurrency control in Power Automate allows you to manage how many flow runs can occur simultaneously. By default, Power Automate allows multiple flow runs to happen in parallel, which can improve performance. However, in scenarios where order matters or where resources might be limited, controlling concurrency is crucial. You can configure concurrency control in trigger settings and specific actions, specifying a degree of parallelism or setting the flow to run sequentially. This ensures data integrity and prevents conflicts in processes that require sequential execution. How do you handle error handling and retries in Power Automate flows? Error handling in Power Automate involves configuring actions and conditions to handle failures gracefully. You can use the Configure Run After settings to define actions that should run after a failure, timeout, or skip. Additionally, for actions prone to transient failures, you can configure retry policies, specifying the number of retries and intervals between retries. This helps ensure that temporary issues do not cause the entire flow to fail, providing resilience and reliability. How do you manage and secure environment variables in Power Automate? Environment variables in Power Automate are used to store configuration data that can be reused across multiple flows and environments. They are managed through the Power Platform Admin Center. To secure environment variables, you should set appropriate security roles and permissions, ensuring only authorized users can create, modify, or access these variables. Additionally, sensitive data can be stored securely by marking variables as secrets, which encrypts the data and restricts access. What are some best practices for optimizing the performance of Power Automate flows? 1. To optimize the performance of Power Automate flows. To use filters in triggers to reduce unnecessary flow executions. 3. Minimize the number of actions and loops by consolidating logic where possible. 4. Use parallel branches for actions that can run concurrently. 5. Reduce the frequency of scheduled flows to the necessary minimum. 6. Utilize connectors and actions that support bulk operations. 7. Monitor flow performance and identify bottlenecks using the flow checker and run history. How can you integrate Power Automate with on-premises data sources? Integration with on-premises data sources is achieved using the on-premises data gateway. This gateway acts as a bridge, securely facilitating data transfer between Power Automate and on-premises systems like SQL Server, SharePoint, and other data sources. To set this up, you need to install the gateway on a local server, configure it with the necessary connectors, and ensure proper network and firewall configurations to allow secure communication. Explain how you can use expressions and functions in Power Automate to manipulate data asterisk. Expressions and functions in Power Automate are used to perform operations on data within actions. These include string manipulation, example, concat, substring, mathematical operations, example, add, multiply, logical comparisons, example, if, equals, and date time functions, example, add is, UTC now. They are written using the workflow definition language and can be inserted into fields in actions to dynamically transform and manipulate data as the flow executes. What are custom connectors, and how do you create and use them in Power Automate? Custom connectors allow you to connect Power Automate to APIs and services not natively supported. To create a custom connector, define the connector schema using the OpenAPI definition or Postman collection. Specify authentication methods, such as OAuth 2.0, API key, or basic authentication. Define the actions and triggers that the connector will support. Test the connector to ensure it works correctly. Once created, 
Custom connectors can be used in flows like any other connector, enabling integration with virtually any web-based service. Discuss the role of HTTP actions in Power Automate and provide examples of their use cases. HTTP actions in Power Automate are used to send HTTP requests to external APIs and services. They enable integration with web services and retrieval or submission of data. Examples include Sending a GET request to retrieve data from a web service. Posting data to a REST API to create a new resource. Updating or deleting resources using PUT, PATCH, or DELETE requests. HTTP actions are powerful for extending the capabilities of Power Automate and integrating with various services beyond built-in connectors. How do you handle and process large datasets in Power Automate flows? Handling large datasets in Power Automate involves strategies to manage performance and avoid timeouts. Techniques include Using pagination to retrieve data in manageable chunks. Applying filters in queries to reduce the volume of data. Utilizing parallel branches to process data concurrently. Leveraging batch processing actions if supported by the connector. Storing intermediate results in variables or external storage, example, SharePoint, Azure SQL, to break down processing into smaller steps. How do you implement and manage approval workflows in Power Automate? Approval workflows in Power Automate are implemented using the Approvals Connector. Steps include Creating an approval action, specifying details like title, description, and approvers. Configuring the approval type, example, first to respond, everyone must approve. Handling the approval response using wait for an approval action and subsequent actions based on the response, approve or reject. Using conditions and parallel branches to handle different approval outcomes. Monitoring and managing approvals through the Approvals Center in Power Automate or Power Automate mobile app. What are the different types of triggers available in Power Automate? And how do you choose the right one for a specific scenario? Power Automate supports various types of triggers, including Automated triggers, initiated by events in connected services, example, new email, item added to SharePoint. Instant triggers, manually started by a user, example, button click. Scheduled triggers, run at specified intervals, example, daily, weekly. API webhook triggers, respond to HTTP requests or webhooks. Choosing the right trigger depends on the use case. Automated triggers are best for reactive flows, instant triggers for user-initiated actions, scheduled triggers for recurring tasks, and API webhook triggers for integrating with custom services or external systems. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Your support means a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for improvement or topics you'd like me to cover in the future, please leave a comment below. I've put a lot of hard work into creating this video, and I hope it has been valuable to you. Thanks again, and see you in the next video.